Hey everyone, it's Amanda with Love & Soap Studio. So I wanted to share with you one of my favorite soaps that I love to make. And it happens to be from my new book, which I wanted to show you as well. So I just got done writing um, a new basic soap making book. And here it is right here. It's a complete guide to natural soap making. And so in it we have cold process soap, hot process soap, liquid soap, melt and pour, hand melt soap. And all of the recipes include natural herbs and spices and clays for colorant and then essential oils um, for scent. And so it has 65 recipes. Um, and I just wanted to show you a little bit about the book, like just to kind of give you a preview. And then I wanted to preview one of the recipes. And um, the recipe I'm going to make today is this um, coffee scrub tiger stripe soap. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it in just a bit. Okay. So the book is full color and step-by-step uh, -step photos on all of the like design techniques and the basic steps for each process. And then you'll be able to see kind of what some of the soaps look like when you make them. Okay, so here's an example of the step-by-step uh, -step photos. Okay, so it's a really good book, uh, whether you're a beginner or an advanced soap maker, because I think you'd find a lot of good ideas or maybe just some creative inspiration um, on a colorant maybe you haven't tried or a technique. Um, so lots of different things. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this coffee scrub soap. And I'll post the recipe uh, for you because you probably can't see it too well in the video. Um, this is one of my favorite recipes because it's super simple as far as base oils. It has 40% coconut oil, 15% cocoa butter, and 45% olive oil. And it comes out really nice, really hard. It's palm free and vegan. Um, and then the essential oil blend is just amazing. It has basil, orange, spearmint, fir needle, and bitter almond essential oil. Okay, so I'll share that with you down in the um, description for the video so that you can see. This is also one of my favorite design techniques. It's just a simple tiger stripe design. And so especially if you're new to soap making and you want to get into swirling, uh, this might be a good design for you to try. And so I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get started. All right, so this isn't a full-blown tutorial. I'm not going to go step by step and making your, you know, your oil and your lye solution. So definitely check out the book for that. Um, but here is what I have ready. So in this bowl, I have my base oils all ready to go, including my essential oils. So my base oils and my scent. And then this is my lye solution. And my temperatures are good. I'm between about 90 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it won't move too quickly. It should stay nice and fluid for us and uh, give us time to uh, do the design. Now along with this you're going to need a mold and my favorite mold is just a simple 10 inch silicone loaf mold. I get mine at Brambleberry but lots of suppliers have them. Um, you're going to need three containers for pouring your design. So I like these spout containers but you can use you know anything you might already have. And then our colorants and additives for this soap we're using coffee grounds, zinc oxide for white, and then charcoal powder for black. Now coffee grounds can be quite exfoliating. Um, if you like a nice scratchy soap, then just use your regular coffee grounds. Um, if you want them more powdery than scratchy, then definitely grind them as much as you can and then that will make them you know, more powdery. It'll still be ex exfoliating, but it won't like be scratchy. Okay, so definitely grind them if you don't like a real scratchy soap. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to pour my lye solution into my oils and then I'm going to mix to just a very light trace. You don't want a, a real heavy trace or you're not going to have time to color all your individual colors and have your soap be fluid enough to pour. So you're looking just for a light trace. All right, so I'm thinking this looks pretty good. Make sure it's all mixed up. And you can kind of test it. And we're actually just nice and emulsified. I don't even see much of a trace line, but it's all one color. There's no oil floating or anything like that. So it's definitely ready um, that we can divide it out in color. So for this design, I just simply divide it out into three equal parts. If you want, you know, heavier on one color and lighter on another, you can certainly um, divide it however you want. Okay, 
And you can just eyeball it. I try to get, you know, as equal as I can, but it certainly doesn't have to be perfect. This essential oil blend just smells so good. And if you don't have all of those essential oils, no big deal. You can just use another blend from the book. And I have um, some very basic uh, blend ideas for you as well. Because I know, you know, not everyone, especially if you're just starting out, can afford all of these different essential oils. So, so I have some options for you in there. Okay, so there's our soap. Uh, divide it out. So now we're going to add our colorants. Okay, so the recipe calls for a tablespoon of zinc oxide, that's going to be our white, a teaspoon of ground coffee, and then two teaspoons of cosmetic charcoal powder. But if you want your colors lighter or darker, then feel free to use less or more. You don't have to follow a recipe, you know, exactly um, how I have it written. So with the natural colorants, what you see is what you get. Um, if it does go through gel phase, the colors will pop a little bit. But make sure that you add enough to where you're happy with the color in case your soap doesn't go through gel phase. Okay, so a tablespoon of zinc oxide. And I'm actually going to mix these in using my stick blender, so I don't worry about dispersing them or anything. Uh, you certainly can if you want to, though. Okay, a teaspoon of ground coffee. And then two teaspoons of charcoal, because I want that charcoal to be nice and dark. So that should make it nice and dark. All right, so let's blend these up. Okay, and I'm gonna go light to dark, and I'm just gonna use my stick blender to push that zinc oxide down, and that'll help it mix in very nicely. All right, so that looks good. <clears throat> you can wash your stick blender off if you want, but I don't usually, I just go to the next one, and it's not usually enough to make a difference. And same thing with that charcoal, just push it down with your stick blender. All right, that looks good. Now when you're doing charcoal in your soap, <clears throat> what you see is what you normally get, although, you know, gel phase does help. But if you want it, you know, more black, then simply add some more charcoal to it. If you add too much charcoal and you're trying to get a gray or something like that, then you can actually just add some zinc oxide uh, to your black to give you that gray. All right, those look pretty good. And we're still nice and fluid, so we're gonna have plenty of time to do our pour. Okay, now let me show you two examples of um, a tiger stripe soap. So let me make sure it's focused on everything. All right, so this tiger stripe soap was done with thicker soap. This one was done with thinner soap. So depending on how thin you want your rings in your in your design or your stripes in your design, um, again, thicker soap, you know, like a medium to a thick trace. And then this was definitely at a pretty light trace um, with small pores. Okay, so you can kind of decide how you want your soap to look. All right, so let's get pouring. Okay, so the most important thing when pouring your tiger stripe soap is you pour down the middle of your mold. And no matter what the top looks like, because it might start looking a little muddied on top, just kind of ignore that, because underneath the surface where your design is, you're gonna have nice crisp stripes, okay? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're just gonna go ahead and start start pouring. So just pour down the middle of the mold in stripes. So little pores like that will create those thin lines and then I might do some thicker pores. I kind of like the thicker stripes but it doesn't matter. Oh, I got off there a bit because my other container was in the way. But just pour straight down the middle, okay?
All right, so there is our tiger stripe soap design. And like I said, the top, you know, starts looking a little muddy as the soap kind of rises. But underneath when you cut it, it's gonna be this beautiful tiger stripe design. Now, as far as the top, you can do a few things. You could just gently swirl the top. So don't push your swirling utensil all the way down. Just swirl the, you know, the tippy top. Um, so you can do that, or you can let it sit, let it thicken, and then use like a spoon or a spatula to tease it up if you want that textured look. Um, so completely up to you. I'm just going to do, I think, a little swirl on top and just leave it kind of flat. Or you can leave it like this. You don't even have to do anything, really. You can swirl it like that. You can keep going if you want. I might just do a couple more. Swipes. Don't do too much or you'll muddy it up. It's hard not to want to keep going. Um, but there is our soap. And so I'll let this sit in the mold for 24 hours. Then I'll unmold it. I'll cut it. And then I'll show you what it looks like. So thank you so much for watching. And I really hope you check out my book on Amazon, uh, The Complete Guide to Natural Soap Making. And in it, you'll find more recipes and design techniques just like this one. Thanks, guys. Bye.